What's up YouTube? We're back. Project No Rice. Today's the day where we're going to start taking off um, accessories and other things. Put it on his good motor and then uh, do the swap. So over the course of this we're going to yank out the radiator, yank out everything, tranny, and then start bolting it on to this beast over here. First things first, we're going to take out this hideous intake. If you want this intake, let me know. I'll give it to you for cheap or free. Just drive out. This thing's trash. We took out the battery here, which was easy. Just two little bolts. Got the top pipe out. Then I unplugged all the sensors here and uh, unscrewed the fuel rail. And the fuel regulator and then to make my life easier instead of pulling the hose off I just undid it from the fuel filter so we pulled that out and then I got the injectors out um, so now we're gonna work on taking the intake manifold off but check how nasty is fuel f fuel injectors were on the back side unplugging all these sensors to get this wiring harness out and I'm noticing I need to remove from this fuse box so that it all come out nice. Um, so just unscrew these two, then we can pull them out and put the screws back so you don't lose them. So I got the exhaust off now, intakes off. Um, I spent a whole bunch of time um, taking off sensors here, here, here. Not uh, oil pressure sensor on the back. Bash my fucking finger. Oh my god. So that's gonna be bad. Anyways, um, what else did I do? Yeah, so got the wiring harness mostly out of the way. Next is the power steering bracket. I'm gonna take that off. Swap that over. Got the VTEC distributor on. Water necks on sensors on there sensors on there oil pressure sensors there um obviously i don't have this set yet but all right we're taking this biatch out now and then we'll probably clean under the engine bay area and then we're gonna swap clean the tranny swap over the crank sensor and some other shit and then put the new motor in for power steering, if you're going to keep it, you need the P72 top bracket with the LS bottom bracket. And uh, so yeah, this one's almost ready to get the tranny. We just put the clutch back on and we had to put a dowel pin in. Um, so now we're going to slide the tranny on. Alright, got the motor in. That was a pain in the ass with only two people. It's a lot easier with three pulling it out. But, uh, yeah, we got all the motor mounts torqued down. Um, got the shift linkage put back on. So now it's going to be a bunch of tedious bullshit. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Just have a couple things left. We're going to get the belts on before I put the intake manifold so I can reach that alternator bolt first uh, and easier uh, got the grounds back on we're gonna replace all these grounds because the copper is starting to oxidize and turn green so that's not good so we're gonna do um, I think we're just gonna go four gauge wire just for the fuck of it because I got a stack of four gauge in there somewhere so plenty but yeah looks good I'm feeling good about it all gotta put this intake in and um, we're missing small crap like hose clamps for for this back one and things like that
We're putting in AMSOIL, break-in oil, SAE30. We're gonna run this for roughly 500 miles, between 200 and 500, depending on how much he drives. Then we'll swap over to the AMSOIL Z-Rod. Well, I skipped a bunch of stuff in between because I was cussing a lot, but um, more or less, once we got it together, all the powder coating and paint um, made it to where our ground was a lot shittier. So we upgraded the grounds. Don't mind this crappy intake, it's gonna leave. So we have two there. One of those comes to the battery here, and then one goes to this underneath there. And then this other one from the battery goes to the back of the block. And then there's a little one here. That little one goes to the factory position here. So now the grounds are all good. And um, we need to set base timing. So we have our light on. And in the car, you need to jumper this. You need a jumper that connector right here. Okay. And then when you jumper that, it's a brown, white, and black. Once you jumper that, it'll uh, stop the ECU from changing your timing. And then you adjust your distributor until the timing marks line up on your uh, dampener pulley. So for the connector, since we're using this GSR intake, we have an LS throttle cable, obviously. And so the GSR bracket doesn't work. So what I did was I heated up the uh, LS bracket, then I bent it at a 90, and now it works perfect. So you just have to do that. Um, so we still have to track down couple vacuum leaks and stuff too but it's going all right right here is the VTEC pressure switch and the VTEC solenoid signal so for these this is an LS wiring harness on this car so we didn't have it so we had to buy some pigtails here and wire them in so I'm running the switch is the red and black the solenoids are green and you know whatever wire you use just make sure you write down what it is when you're hooking it into the ECU so we lap soldered it here and put heat shrink now I'm gonna finish taping this up tuck it all nice and pretty under here and plug them in we're plugging in the ECU now and we have to wire in to this empty slot on our LS motor right and we were going through the pins and on here, when you're looking into the ECU, pin one's top left, top left, top left, top left. And the last pin is the bottom right, bottom right, bottom right. So keep that in mind. Don't look at the back of the connector that comes with the ECU that you're gonna use because the pin numbers on the physical back of the connector are backwards. So just know that it's pin one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, little. And then starts again here, goes across, starts again here, goes across, and the last one's the bottom right. So there, that's the way we're going to run the wire. Ignore that power red wire, that's actually coming out. Anyways, we're going through that hole in the back, going under all this, curving up, plugging it in. This connector is B. A, B, C, D. B on the LS is not populated. This plug came with the ECU. And so we added in the pins for the wideband. So the blue here is a switch 12 volt. The black right on this set is a ground. And then the gray is a signal to read the wideband. Then this black was the ground for the VTEC pressure switch and then the gray came off of the factory harness here on C and then the actual VTEC solenoid was on connector A 
if you look here wideband power blue I have put on B1 and if you read over here it's available switch 12 volt so this 12 volt signal will get us well it can be a 12 volt or a ground apparently but this will be a 12 volt power to power this uh, sensor then here we got VTEC pressure um, black it's a sensor ground dedicated sensor only so that'll go to that one and that one's B14 wideband ground B22 which is that gray wire that I put in sensor ground it's dedicated sensor only and then wideband output which is what it's reading I have it oh sorry I need to rewrite this on my paper I put them back to what they should have been uh, I try to make ground black all the time so this is actually gray and that's an available set for 0 to 5 volt input the VTEC pressure switch I have is that other gray wire and that's plugged into C15 and that's just the factory style plug the VTEC solenoid I ran a solid white wire and that's A8 and that's a factory plug too. This wire is what went, goes through the firewall and the other end has a huge plug that plugs into the O2 sensor. So for this, you just simply plug this in, like so. Now, the three wires that I have going to the ECU are what's going to plug in to these wires here. So uh, I need to look at the paperwork again. According to this, red is the switch power. So that's that 12 volt switch. Black is gonna be your ground. And then white is to headlight power for dimming, which is bullshit, we don't care. Um, yellow analog one. Brown is analog two. Now let's see here. Yellow is zero volts equals 7.3. Five volts equals 22.4. Analog out brown is 1.1 equals uh, AFR 14. And 0.1 equals 15. So uh, two seems to be a narrow band, which we don't care about. So brown we're not going to use and white we're not going to use so yellow is going to be our signal out and then black is ground red is power I didn't read far enough if you choose not to utilize the dimming feature connect the white to ground so white and black are both going to go to ground and then we can finish this